Hi, look who I'm with here. And what's your opening line in your video? Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to, uh, well, no, Tesla Joy. That's Welcome right. Welcome to Tesla Joy. <laughs> That's right. <Yeah. laughs> yes, I am here with Sandy at um, uh, Monroe and Associates facility. And um, I'm going to be interviewing Sandy later on today, but Sandy is going to take me on a tour. Yes. And we have a very important task yes. to do right yes. now. So let's go. Okay, good. Okay, all let's right. go. go. And you've seen, well, the doors are all closed. There's uh, HR and uh, she's the office director. Oh, they're having conference calls. That's yes. So this is the front lobby. Ah. Uh. Welcome yeah, Tesla Joy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then over here, oh, and she's not here. Oh, you know what? She's in with the other. She's with the other oh. women. So, okay. Uh, let's go in. I think I were in the sales room. Okay. <clears throat> By the way, that's one of the products that we developed internally. Wow. Everything. So I'll talk a little more okay. about that when we do the tour. Yes. <clears throat> so, oh, can I bore you for a second? Happy birthday! Yay! <laughs> so yeah, I'm just doing a um, a vlog uh -huh. um, of my visit to the office right okay. now, and then um, I. Sandy told me that today is your birthday, yes, is. so we're yes. like, you know, we gotta do 27. this. Twenty-seven <gasps> years young. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Maybe wow. invert the numbers, not quite. No, but, no, you know, no. you don't. don't. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank oh, what a so special much. treat I get Thank to you. Thank be you. here on your birthday. I appreciate it. Yes. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Here, I'll shut the door here. Okay. So. Um, this is uh, an engine that we uh, actually developed with Chrysler uh, when they were broke. <laughs> <laughs> when they were broke. Yeah, everybody predicted that we were going to basically never get paid, but Chrysler did pay us, and that engine won so many awards, it's like amazing. Wow. That's the first one in 2011, uh, but, uh, but they won 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15. In 16, they changed the rules around a little bit, and then it came back and it won a couple more times. Oh my goodness. But, uh, but it's got the most uh, horsepower for, um, uh, for a weight. Yeah. It's incredibly efficient as far as, uh, as, far as uh, emissions and whatnot. And we used to have an engine sitting here. I'll show it to you later. Okay. However, um, we've kind of focused on EVs, and so we've kind of like moved away from uh, you know, too much of a projection on, uh, on uh, what do you call them? On, on ICE vehicles yeah. and ICE engines. Yeah. Um, actually, you know, being as we're here, maybe we can just uh, do a couple of things. Yes. Um, when, uh, when BMW bought um, Rover Group, one of the one of the badges was Mini. Yes. And uh, BMW hired Monroe to um, help them with the Range Rover, the Discovery, the um, the the Defender, a um, couple of other minor things on the Rover cars themselves. But we redid the entire Mini. Wow. So for four or five years, we were in. Great Britain, and working on this. And so the top picture here is the original Mini that was uh, designed by Isagonis uh, in the 60s, 50s or 60s. And then down here is one of the articles that was written about Mini, and I thought it was kind of funny. And the reason is because um, uh, there was a sidebar called Monroe Magic. So lots of different people were interviewed, but um, they stuck that in, so I, I was, we were very, very proud of that. Yes. Um, the Mini uh, made lots of money. Yes, it's iconic. Yeah, and it is iconic. Yeah. We saved the iconic part and the performance part, but 
but basically that thing is not that one on the top was not even close to being crash worthy it was uh it was i wouldn't say a death box but i certainly <laughs> wouldn't put it up there as a safe car not a volvo that's for sure yeah but uh but there's letters a bunch of different letters that's the uh the one that um the one that came from um uh, Chris Lee, he was the head of Mini mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they, I, that's the only thing that BMW kept. Was yeah. The product that we I actually on. went to um, last fall a um, an event. Oh, what was it called? Drive? No, not drive. Like electric, electrify expo, oh, and they okay. had a Mini a Cooper new, EV, yeah. Yeah. and I sat in it. Oh, I yeah. liked it. I liked yeah. it a lot because it it yeah. kept the essence of the design of the. The iconic mini design, right? But it, it's electric. Yeah, I think that um, I think that the, uh, the the new electric mini is going to do well. We haven't gotten one yet. We okay. haven't got the pure EV, but um, uh, but one of our guys has um, has the old one and a new one. He also has a BMW i3. Yeah, he has a whole bunch of cars. Okay. Uh, uh, Paul uh, Paul Lester. So. But anyway, I was I, I briefly mentioned this thing. Um, so this is, you know, it, it's one thing for people to say, oh yeah, we did it. But it's quite another when the CEO of Club Car says uh, that Monroe did it. Right. And what we did was we did benchmarking and uh, we found out what everybody else had and then we established focus groups. And the focus groups told us everything we needed to know in order to come up with a new, uh, golf car that was going to dominate the marketplace and we talked to groundskeepers people who actually golf like members of golf courses um, the management staff of golf courses the people who had to maintain these things everybody to find out what's the right thing to go and do for a new vehicle we did the styling the engineering we did the supplier selection we found brand new suppliers we got rid of almost 60 percent of their suppliers because they were, they weren't they weren't high quality. <clears throat> we did the plant layout, so that's the assembly layout. Um, we uh, purchased the automation, so we bought it, we spe we spec'd it and bought it, and then we were reimbursed obviously by Club Car. Um, we did the logistics plan. The logistics plan was totally different um, under this process. So trucks would come in and unload. This is the uh, loading dock and uh, and basically shipping dock in one and so they would unload the stuff would go to the line and then new vehicles would be put right into those same trucks and and then be shipped away that way um, you made a lot of extra cash I and mean, it's a little different than normal and um, and we built up the first prototype um, uh, not at this facility but two facilities ago and we supervised the build of this plant in the first uh, 500 cars. So there's lots of different things that came in here. The batteries can be swapped quickly because up north here, uh, we uh, sun comes up at about 5.30, 6 o'clock. People want to golf. It doesn't go down till 10 o'clock at night, but by noon, the batteries are dead. So we made it so we could swap out batteries. And the reason that we did that was because these are basically lead acid. and to charge them up takes forever. So this way you buy two sets of batteries and in 15 minutes you can have a productive vehicle again. It's out there making money again. So that was very, very helpful for the people at Club Car. Um, this car has 27 patents that we, we created for Club Car. Our names aren't on them because it's the customer's uh, product. One of them is really kind of simple. Um, I sat in, I don't golf. I don't know. I'm not a golfer. Uh, I'm lousy at the game. So what I did was um, I, I went for a ride and they put me in the passenger seat and they were driving around. It was raining in Augusta. This is where this is. It's Augusta, Georgia. It was raining in Augusta and the water was coming off the roof and it, this is called a tumble home and it was sweeping right over and it was getting, getting me soaking wet. I said, I could be drier outside this vehicle. I said, where are the gutters? No, no golf car had ever had gutters before. This has got a gutter. If you look up top here, you'll yes. see that there's a trough. Oh. And then it goes here, and these are the downspouts. Wow. And you'll notice that the front wheels 
and the rear wheels are not in a line. And the reason for that is because the people who maintain the golf course hate golf course because golf cars leave ruts. So we made it so that the load is slightly distributed so that you don't get ruts. The other thing that they hated was if water came off the top of this vehicle, it swept around and it went under the wheels and that made it even more juicy for the wheels to, again, uh, make ruts. Right. So by doing this and putting the, and putting the downspout inboard, the wheels never touched the, uh, the water and so, uh, you know, it, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. We also added features that didn't cost anything. So there's places for um, uh, your hat, if you want, and uh, and cups for beer and things like that. Just little 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 things. Before they just had a flat panel. Right. They paid all the money that they need to pay for uh, when when you do plastic injection molding. You pay for that front area. So why not just get Adam uh, another uh, whatever two bucks of plastic and boom, all of a sudden you've got all these features. So yeah. they were pretty happy with all of that. There's other things, but but in essence, um, they were pretty happy. Their um, their market share went from, um, their market share went from uh, 32% to 80% in the first year. Wow. Um, and then there was a lot of protesting by Yamaha, who ultimately got out of the business, and EasyGo. And uh, so now, uh, club car is forced to try and stay under 66 percent, two thirds of the market. However, they can't do it because the demand is so high right. for this product. Right. Yeah. Wow, just little innovation. Well, redesign, it was, it was, like redesigning yeah. of things. I'm Normally, right. when we get done uh, with a with a product, after we get finished, there's usually a lot of patents right. and. Um, and there's usually uh, huge customer acceptance. The, yeah. the prices usually, or the cost usually goes down. And uh, so they, the company that we work for makes more money. Yeah. That's, so is this um, patented design yeah. up here? Yeah. It's yeah. called, um, the, the patent is called um, Monsoon. The oh, Monsoon route. nice. Yeah, yeah. So we also work with um, companies like um, McLaren F1. Yes. Uh, we work with them. Uh, for two years uh, to um, increase, well, a lot of things. I'd rather not talk too much about yeah, that, but we okay. helped them out. Mm -hmm. They were very happy. Uh, those are the two uh, two of the drivers that we, we got to eat lunch with uh, quite often. That is amazing. Yeah. Signed, too. What's that? Signed photograph. Uh, yeah, they signed it. We, <laughs> we were eating lunch with them almost every day because they were telling us what they wanted to have in the way of feel when they're driving and uh, they wanted they wanted certain things that would make it easier for them to to drive the car and win. Right. We also work on TV sets, both LG oh, and wow. Samsung are customers. I had no uh, idea. Yeah, yeah. We, we work on a lot of things that we don't usually talk too much about. Right. If we can get into the sales room later on, I can show you some of the other things that are in there. Uh, we get a lot of press. <clears throat> we also work on medical devices. This was, um, this so was the uh, uh, Gemini uh, uh, that uh, that we basically pretty much destroyed. We uh, we we helped uh, IDAC uh, dominate the market. They went from I think 20 percent to a hundred percent. Whoa! Yeah, because the new one that we invented uh, was neonatal, so you could put it on babies. Instantly, hospitals were interested in that. Amazing. These are knitting machines. Uh, Stoll uh, brought us in. Uh, they um, <clears throat> they were dying in the uh, in the marketplace. They were being slaughtered by uh, the Japanese yeah. and the Chinese. Both were copying and making their product less expensive. We did a total redesign of their product line. Uh, it made such a significant difference that um, they got all their customers back and whatnot, a, a lot of costs came out. Again, I can't get into too much detail, but we also work on, uh, we also work on uh, a lot of other different aircraft. Um, we worked on EF-22 in a kind of a, we, we were trying very hard to help them out. Uh, unfortunately, um, that was canceled, Obama canceled that because 
many, many promises, but not much in the way of delivery. This mm -hmm. is the finest jet aircraft, fighter jet aircraft in the world, period. Uh, but um, it cost too much and on and on. We also took um, quite a bit of money. If you look down here, you can see these are only four of the mm, 650 things that we did uh, with, uh, with the C-17. And you can see there's big money that came out of there. Yes. Um, like I said, we get, we get a lot of press. We can go on this all day long. <clears throat> so let's go over here and we'll have a look at a couple of the different, um, different things that are, that are going on. Um, so um, over here we have the Mach-E and sitting right next to it is the, uh, the plaid. Mm -hmm. So you've got uh, two vehicles that are about the same size. One is obviously a luxury vehicle and the other one is not. Um, one goes fast, the other one goes wicked fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, so we, we uh, tear them all apart. You can see everything right here is all documented. Everything's been costed. Um, we know every material, we know every fastener, um, every minute detail has been, uh, has been scrutinized for what's really going on inside. So we pretty much know everything about everybody's EV. Yeah. So you know these cars inside and out, literally. Literally. Uh, yes. There's nothing that escapes us. And we also, uh, we know exactly how many hours per vehicle it takes. We can, some people talk about engineered hours per vehicle. We, we have that data, um, everything. There's yeah. nothing that uh, nothing that escapes. And then we also can crank out process sheets if we wanted to. Right. Over this area right here, this is called tech transfer and our light waiting area. So we can, um, <clears throat> we, we have a database that's got a terabyte of information or so in it. But this is touchy-feely things, and and what we do is we we find a technology or a material or a process that's uh, being used in in one industry, and then we find that hey, this is being used in the medical industry, and we go over here and we do, and, and we give it to somebody in the uh, automotive, let's say, industry. Kids toys, fabulous place to find good, really good snap fits. <clears throat> and they, they, they have a good idea of not making as many parts as what a uh, car or what. So we find things that go from uh, snap fits, kinds of deals and money. We'll take that information and put that into vehicles as well. We're, we are, mostly what we do is new product development. People will bring us uh, their plans and, uh, and how they want to try and in, uh, enter the marketplace and what kind of styling they want and what type of features, and then we'll help them. Sometimes we'll take it over completely, but sometimes we'll just help them to get to where they want to, the goals that they want to achieve. Yeah, I think a lot of times um, <clears throat> when people talk about innovation, they think that it has to be something brand new. But a lot of times it's like what you're doing is yeah. you uh, repurpose the, the principle from one area and apply right. it to a completely different area that people normally right don't think of that's and then it works and that's innovation right there yeah innovation is not invention invention is very 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 difficult right. um, we have on a couple of occasions come up with inventions um, one was a fuse that I was involved with it was a totally new invention and a totally different fuse <clears throat> and it made a huge difference uh, to the company that we were working with it also makes a huge difference um, in the battlefield so that fuse was really, really, um, it's a fuse and a battery in one kind. Of, and that, that kind of was a big deal. And that was an invention. Um, apart from that one, I, can, I can't think of anything else that I really and truly invented. Innovation though, um, like if we turn around and look at this, you can see that these are all appliances. Mm -hmm. At one time, uh, when we were doing a lot of Chinese work, uh, we're, Obviously, we lost that business because of um, <clears throat> because of uh, COVID and whatnot. We couldn't fly and stuff. It just right. it went away. But you can see rice cookers, pressure cookers. Those are microwaves. These are uh, the smaller versions of um, 
of hot water tanks that they use over there. Um, that's blowers for big air conditioning systems and heating systems. And then over here you can see these are cookers <clears throat> and heaters. And then if you look further back, uh, refrigerators, um, stoves and ovens, we, we've done everything. And we helped, uh, our customer was Mydia, and we yeah. helped them go from, <clears throat> from uh, Number three in the marketplace, the number one. Yeah, I, I, I'm aware of who they are. Yeah, yeah. Maida. Yeah, Maida. Yeah. Maida. They've yeah. got a lot of... Medea, Maida is what we... Yeah, Maida. And, yeah. Yeah, Maida is what they call uh, call it. Um, but people think it's media spelled wrong, yeah, but it's no, really no. not. They're, no, it's uh, they're a Chinese huge. name. Yeah. It, I think it, it means like beautiful or something like that. I think you're right. Yeah. I think beauty is... Yeah, beauty. Because yeah. uh, in Chinese, Mei. Yeah, May is beauty. May is beauty. It's yeah. May May the so May dia. Yeah. 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 So anyway, this is um, this area right here is kind of like devoted to some of the aircraft stuff that we did. So we took this was an airplane. You can see it over there called the CB. <clears throat> and this plane, the one that we have, was made in uh, 1946. Wow. At the time, they were the they were building more aircraft than anybody ever built ever. Um, in a year. Yeah. They were just going like a house on fire. But this aircraft violated every rule that the FAA had. You're not allowed to use stampings. This car, this plane's got tons of stampings. You're not allowed to use those hoops right there. Um, you're not allowed to spot weld. Okay, well, this airplane's got over 10,000 spot welds. Now let's talk a little bit about what happened with this airplane. This airplane also has a material that um, was developed specifically for Republic, the name of the company. And um, that material <clears throat> is unique. N nobody um, has ever, have, people come back, oh, it's 60, 60, no, it's not. They, this material is totally unique and it forms well and it doesn't corrode as easy and um, and it's it's great for spot welding and it doesn't rot so this plane is uh old this thing is actually older than i am wow and uh yeah wow so i thought you'd say that <laughs> it was unkind of you <laughs> no, no 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 i'm but like anyway, wow at the end of the impressive. day this this really is an impressive plane none of the spot welds are rotten right. this plane has tens of uh, maybe a hundred thousand hours on it it's got a huge log and it's a salty which means yes. this plane lands on the water yes. this is an amphibian it lands on the water none of the spot welds are rotten and nobody's been in here to fix anything because of that sponge right there we ripped off a piece of that and had it tested and we found out that sponge has been sitting there since 1947. <gasps> Right. That's what I said. This this thing is absolutely amazing. Amazing. Um, it's had different engines, but this is an amazing piece of engineering. It's one-tenth of the labor of any other aircraft at, of its size. One-tenth of the labor. My but the boy. FAA threw it under the bus and said, no way. We can't do that. We can't let that happen because the the aluminum is not approved, spot welding is not approved, stamping is not approved, on and on and on. And yet, here it is, yes. right in front of everybody. And by that the way... That sponge, by the way, is as old as my mother. Wow. 1947. Well, if you want it, you can take it home as a present <laughs> for her birthday. Awesome. Ma, look. <laughs> but uh, but this, uh, this thing here, uh, this is an amazing feat of engineering, and they were put out of business. Wow. They were put out of business because Everybody else protested, wait a minute, they're getting away with stuff we can't get away with. Hey, wait a minute, these guys are making a lot of money and we're dying uh, on and on and on because they did make money. By the way, 50% of them are flying. 25% of them are either in museums or being restored and about 10% uh, are like this. Uh, they're, they're torn apart, but they're not being restored and it's not a museum piece. Yeah. And then 15% are off the market. That is incredible, incredibly high. Virtually no other little airplanes, general aviation planes, fall into that category. So we're, we're amazed at this, 
and I'll tell you, if I was ever going to go into business someplace other than the United States to make airplanes, this is the this is the plane I'd copy. Yeah. And that's what we did up here. So that aircraft ah. was the one that we designed. It's called Paradigm, and um, it seats five people. All the seats fold flat. It flies autonomous. This is the um, uh, this is yeah. some of the stuff that we created. This is a emulator. So. A long time ago when we were working with NASA, mm -hmm. uh, we had a big dish. This plane or that would emulate what it's like to take off at any airport in the United States. And it, it was really, really hot stuff. We had got, uh, <laughs> we got a lot of people really enthusiastic. We developed our own seat, our CEO built it, we put in uh, this has got airbags that are built into the seat belt. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, AmSafe is the name of that company. This is me turning the, uh, turning the engine on and off. Now, that doesn't sound like a heck of a lot, <laughs> but if you turn off an aircraft engine, they're very, very old fashioned. There's no movement has happened in airplane engine design forever because it's too expensive and there's too many rules and regulations. So this is the engine that came out of out of this plane, okay? And it used to sit right up here. Oh, interesting. This is the engine that we were gonna put in to the new, para uh, our Paradigm engine. Right. This is a Corvette engine. Wow. And it has more horsepower, it has more power, it's more reliable, and you can turn it on and off. You turn that engine off, you gotta wait 15 minutes or so for it to catch up. That uses things like, like a magneto. No, Nobody even knows what the heck that is anymore. This thing here, it did two things for us. It gave us tremendous amounts of power. We could take that, we have all kinds of uh, tests that we did and whatnot. We can take off in a really short runway because we're using the same Hershey bar wings that came from this thing. We can take off in a short amount of time. We can use ordinary fuel. So we changed the, the uh, ignition of the engine module so that it would uh, reach altitudes without stalling out, be it, without being uh, uh, what they call choked out, or sorry, without being starved out. There's no, no air up there, no oxygen mm -hmm. up there, so we have to add more fuel occasionally, and, and the O2 sensors, that where the sensors on the engine would determine, hey, you know what, uh, we have to add more fuel and whatnot as we went up and up, so we built our own. This is already being retrofitted. Now, when everything collapsed for us um, in, um, in 2008, no kidding, um, our, our sponsor, the guys who were putting in a half a billion dollars, was Lehman Brothers. <gasps> if, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, if, if we didn't have bad luck, we'd have no luck. So, but the, the, the Lehman Brothers guys were going to put half a billion dollars in and we were going to start building that plane back there. Yeah. Now, you just saw happy birthday to Sue. Yes. This is Sue's, um, Sue's got a doctorate and she, that's her, 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 her doctoral uh, thesis. Oh my goodness. Her little book, as it were. And this is to talk about how we were going to build that plane out of standard aluminum because we... We've got a lot of uh, help from the FAA. Um, you know, they said, "Hey, you know what? You do it, and we'll 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 make things happen as long right. as it's not going to kill people." Right. Um, and so we had to use a standard aluminum. We couldn't use the Reynolds uh, aluminum that's on that. And um, and so yeah, so oh she developed goodness. the laser weld bone. We had come up with the idea, but uh, but she proved it out. You can see there's some coupons here, but she has literally hundreds of thousands of coupons that uh, that we went through to figure out what's the right way to weld, what's the right, um, it, because it has a bonding agent, what's the right bonding agent, how long will it need to cure. We got done, we could make 60,000 aircraft like that a year. Oh my Nobody goodness. makes, I don't think there's anybody in the, in the, in the world no. that makes 5,000 no. airplane yeah. a year so yeah. that's amazing it would have been, yeah and it was really really inexpensive yeah so when you get it that down that far we were looking at 150 to 250 thousand and you'd have an airplane that oh that's the other thing 
because we have that engine, yeah. that engine requires water cooling. So where did the hot water go? That was, well, number one, it would be used for cabin heat. Number two, we put, we put a, a, a heat exchanger along the wings so we get rid of icing hmm. and the exhaust you'll see there's no exhaust pipe yes. on normal aircraft the exhaust pipe is vented to the air these yes. things are uh, terrible from an emission standpoint we put the exhaust into the tail oh. and so the tail is warmed by the exhaust uh, the exhaust gas amazing yeah we had all kinds of great ideas that went nowhere <laughs> yeah I, well, so. and it's like you know you put a car engine in a plane yeah, because yeah. it's better. The That's engine. just amazing. Yeah. yeah, like who would have thought? Only well, you. Well, we did. <laughs> Only you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, there was other people that are using that that idea right now, and they're putting it right up there because yes. we that was our first job was to find out if we could make everything work. So we took that, we rigged it up, stuck it upstairs, and bingo. So yeah. some a lot of guys what they'll do is they'll just say that their their number will be on the side of the plane they just put an x in front of it says that it's not standard right and then they use they don't use they can use av gas uh but av gas has got lead in it it's got much higher octane very expensive yes um but this will just this can run on ordinary gasoline, gasoline. amazing yeah. yeah so that's kind of like what happens in here this has got a lot of other sad tales we we came up with so many wonderful things but unfortunately yeah, lots of great ideas everything melted uh with the banks yeah the bank so let's walk around here and um over here you can see that we're working with our chemo oh our chemo i drove this yeah yeah it's it is fun it so, is fun so we're working on another one um we've done some things to help uh bring the cost down on this existing one yeah but the next one will be uh uh, it'll be uh, it'll be a uh, probably a lot better. Yeah. People are gonna like it more. Yeah, I, I actually uh, last weekend at the mall, they had um, another Canadian design brand. Solo. Yes, yeah, Solo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're I, they're trying to sell in the states. I, I sat in it. Actually, I didn't drive around. I think they're moving to the states. I think yes, they're they're, they're uh, opening a factory in t in Arizona. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think this um, this type of market is heating up as well. Yeah. So we're looking at we have Aptera as a customer, Archimoto as a customer, and Nobe as a customer in Europe. So these guys, um, these guys all have three wheel vehicles. Yeah. And the reason for that is because that's the only way I can get the price down to a point where ordinary people can buy them. So this one is open. Um, uh, basically an open concept vehicle Archimoto or sorry Aptera and Nobe are uh, are not they, okay. they have doors and everything I else. see yeah. yeah so a lot more comfort creature comfort yes so um, this is what's left of the model, model 3, three. <laughs> my <This> car is, <laughs> yeah. yep and uh, this is the BMW i3 we kept some of the things that we thought were uh, kind of cool um, back there is the uh, carbon did you yeah, come back this is the carbon fiber body that um, that the um, that the BMW i3 had. Mm. So now, don't touch it. It's really sharp. It's because okay. we had to tear it apart. This one's actually raised away. So um, <clears throat> so we wanted to know everything about this. We spent 2.2 million dollars analyzing this car. We knew everything about it. Now you can buy it for 10 bucks on the uh, online and we have it basically comes across that we have very very accurate cost estimations because we had the bmw guys saying who gave you these numbers and then we've had other people that that worked on this vehicle come back and say why wow, your numbers are spot on how did you do that stuff like that this is this is really why people hire us it's either new product development or costing so and we do a lot of cars for costing but we also look at um, we look at things like um, medical devices or appliances, things like that. Um, uh, Mighty really liked us from that standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. So let's uh, let's move. Actually, we can cut right through here. Okay. Um, this is the battery cage. Um, it's uh, hard to see, but in essence, all the batteries are kept 
after we discharge them, we put them in here, we lock them up, and um, it, it has its own uh, uh, fire system so that if something goes wrong, they get uh, they get shot with foam yes. and stuff to yes. so the fire doesn't go anywhere. This over here was my prediction on um, what's it going to look like uh, when the 4680 yes. comes out, and um, and the guy said Tesla actually came back and said, "Hmm, pretty good guesses." <laughs> Anybody helping you? But this was what we guessed it was going to be looking like, and it did. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that soon we'll be able to get a Model Y. And when we do that, we'll be able to tear it apart and check it. Just how much. I think it's got. I think it's got one more row of of cells. These these are about the right size. These are about the right size for yeah. the uh, the forty six eighty. The forty six eighty. Yeah. They're huge. And, uh, they are. Ooh. Yeah. So these are great from an economy standpoint. Yeah. And they give you plenty of power. It's a little more difficult to try and cool them. So. Um, but we'll see what happens. Right now, this is what we're looking at, and uh, I know that this is kind of close. We'll get to see how close when we get a, yes. get a hold of the Model Y. A Looking model. forward to it. Yeah. So these here are other battery packs that uh, that are out there. These are the Tesla uh, Model 3 and Model Y pack that uh, come out of Fremont. Um, I'm not sure what this one is, but my guess is that it's probably out of the Mach-E. No, it's not this Let's see I don't like usually touching this stuff don't do this at home this looks like it's out of the Rivian, Rivian. Okay. okay so um, we'll just leave that alone and don't do that at home see <laughs> I should have used those gloves are useless anyway <laughs> uh, but uh, but we we do training sessions for uh, different people that want it. these are the kind of gloves you normally use. Okay. these ones will keep you from um, getting shot killed <laughs> so, <laughs> electrified yeah so all these things have been discharged so there's virtually no chance that i would really get um poked but that one uh, doesn't like to be discharged um so it's it's still a little bit hot and um when you uh when you see some of these like that one over there it says live yeah we made, uh, I made everybody start putting, when they are alive, put a little thing, because these these have a chemical composition that allow them to charge all by themselves. Mm. The chemicals will, will give you a charge. And um, <clears throat> I was, um, <laughs> I was out here and I picked up, um, that's called pouch style. I picked up a bunch of pouches and whatnot. And I, uh, I was talking to the guys and they thought it would be funny. They said, well, just cut one off and you can show it to the customer. As soon as I got the scissors on the edge. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, no, so, no, no, no. Yeah, they knew how much was in there. More than enough to scare the crap out of me, <laughs> but uh, but not enough to really hurt. Uh, well, not, it did hurt. It did it, hurt. But it didn't kill me. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yes, I, that's what I say. <laughs> so over here, we're into, this is where uh, actual work is being done. So over in directly in back of you is um, customer, a couple of customers that we're working on right mm -hmm. now. Um, that over there is the uh, Rivian, I believe. And uh, down here are a uh, couple of electric motors, bigger motors than, uh, than what you'd normally see. So over here are all the Rivian parts. Ah, yes. So many of the guys are, uh, this thing's all torn apart now. So they're at their desks and they do costing they're doing and analy chemical analysis and, analysis and yeah. stuff like that. Over here is the uh, casting out of the Model Y. This is the this is um, one of the early castings, so it's only half of oh, the car. Okay, yeah. And um, now it's the like a big mega casting, yeah, a mega, mega casting. casting. Yeah. yeah. So that um, is brand spanking new. This has been sitting on my factory floor for 15, at least 15 years. <gasps> and I have walked by, or have had executives from every car company you can think of looking at this and saying, ah, oh, Sandy, castings cannot ever work. Wow, how are you going to repair them? Let me ask you a question. Um, what happens when the longitudinals are 
broken or bent. Wow, car scrap. Why would I want to repair an aluminum one if I'm not repairing a steel one? Well, you may have a point there, but we're not going to go to cat. Okay, fine. Yeah. So this guy's going to make make out like a bandit. Yeah. This guy's got the right answer, and the rest of the guys are saying, "Ah, oh, I remember the good old days." <laughs> so there you are. So anyhow, so this is um, this is like I say, uh, where um, there are still some uh, tear down being being happening. Yes. So that looks like the front module. So that's got a long ways to go to, to before we're finished. And uh, in the back, one of uh, one of our guys that's working on the uh, rear module. And then Stuart, uh, the guy back there, he's he's taking care of what looks like the cooling system. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the guys are inside. We usually do the sheet metal is about the last thing we do because it just uh it takes so long and we only got a couple of guys that can do that kind of stuff. but you can see wow. here this is the rolling chassis so this is how the car really is made it's got this big giant frame and then you pick up the body and you drop it on top mm. yeah so this is where all the magic happens well <laughs> yeah definitely we find that yes this is where we find that <clears throat> and then this is where we take pictures. Every every part is got a picture. And then you ca you catalog them. Everything goes yeah. into the big reports. I yeah. don't think there's any out here, but there's uh, several. Um, there's tens of thousands of pages in the reports that documents everything. Yeah. And over here, this is um, where we have all the um, electric motors. So we've taken a. It, we haven't taken apart every electric vehicle, but we've taken apart pretty much every electric motor. Um, so you can see there's a Jaguar, you can see the Teslas, BMW. You can see that there's a couple of names you won't recognize because they're, uh, uh, they make electric motors that other big clients will buy. Mm -hmm. um, Audi, all kinds of places. And then around here, <coughs> this is, um, in the back here, we're looking at um, the batteries. This is a kind of off limits to everybody, yeah. except for whoever's working in it. And um, that's the Rivian battery pack. Ooh. Yeah. So that's as close as we get. Yes. Because this is still live and yeah. uh, it's been sitting there for a while, so it'll be charging back up. So when we're ready to go, we'll take that. We have a discharge area. Yeah that um, not so glamorous, so I won't show you. <laughs> Anyways, that's gonna go uh, there and then it'll be brought down to a certain level and then we'll start taking, and you can see the modules. Yes. There's one, two, three, four modules. Inside each one of the, um, inside, inside each one of those, are, they're two stacks high because what Rivian did was one goes like this, one goes like that. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, so there's a lot, of, a lot of horsepower in this, this baby right here. Yeah. Yeah. So let's move on. I just, <clears throat> there are a few projects here that I unfortunately can't talk about. I understand. I was um, going to ask if there and there's any area that I shouldn't be filming. Just let me know. <laughs> I will show you. <laughs> so uh, so anyway, um, there some are in another building. We have a two offices oh, okay uh, I, or two buildings okay this one here is 47,000 square feet the other one is about um, 20,000 square feet or thereabouts okay. so one has uh, Department of Defense stuff in it and this one here has black projects hence the black screens all over okay so they um, this is uh, and there was one here we just shipped it out this was uh, all filled up with a uh, oh and that's the no bay over there that's uh, the uh, car that's being made in, in Europe. So let's uh, let's go around here and I'll show you the uh, uh, the classroom. This is okay. where we do the training and we do outbriefing for um, for our customers. This is a technique for um, for um, modeling or sorry for assembly. Uh, it uses light beams to tell the operators where to move. And there's nobody in here, so good. Yeah. Oh, so nice. this is. Um, 
this is also where the band practices. <laughs> you so guys have a band? We do. We have a lot of guitar players, keyboard players, a few yeah. drummers, <clears throat> lots of people who are good at good singers. We, uh, Dude, we have a lot of are you in the here. band? Not anymore. I got a problem with uh, my voice. Okay. Um, I or uh, if you sing a lot, yeah. Um, eventually, you're going to get to a point where you grow these little things Nodules. called polyps. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that stops me from singing. Aww. I'll spend the rest of the night coughing my brains out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> what genre of music did you sing? Um, well, pretty much anything. Um, mostly, when I was a kid, it was always, you know, Motown and rock. Yes. R&B as well. And then really? When I, yeah. And then as I grew older, um, actually, when I was really young, I used to... <laughs> I used to sing and, and call for, uh, what do you call them, square dances for my, really? and my mother uh, and dad used to have parties, so I would sing country songs, and uh, which, and then I, uh, I would do calls for square dancing. And then uh, when I got older, I was in a couple of small garage bands, and, um, and that was like uh, imitating uh, the Beatles and uh, Dave Clark Five and people from a nobody knows anymore <clears throat> and then um, and then as I got older um, I found I could make more money uh, singing at um, old people bars you know that I'm old <laughs> and uh, and uh, so I would go in there and there was a lady that I used to sing with and we would sing show tunes Summertime was very, very popular. Yeah. You know, summertime. Yeah, I love that song. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, so yeah, and then, um, uh, and then when I was traveling to the Far East, in Japan, I, uh, I got lots of free dinners, lots of free <laughs> drinks at karaoke, and same thing true in China. Yes. I spent a lot of time sing and Singapore. If I got in there, <clears throat> and there was bets on who was the best singer because they all do it. Um, yeah, so I never wow. bought a beer ever. Wow, ever. now we know. I never bought a dinner <laughs> ever. They, they decided to bring that up. Yeah, so. Now we know your hidden talent. My hidden talent, yeah. Well, as long as it stays within my range, yes. um, I, uh, I, can, I can make it work. Nice. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, in here, this is uh, some of the office space for the engineer. Uh, some of them are here, some of them work from home. Uh, maybe, it, and it's getting close to lunchtime. Some of them yes. probably already took off for lunch. <clears throat> and then uh, these ones, uh, some of these are reserved for the interns. We mm -hmm. hire interns. Green. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so we bring in a lot of interns and people like that. So they, they're here sometimes and gone sometimes. Right. I, um, I chatted with Corey yesterday. And yep. uh, he told me he, he, he's been here since he was a co-op. Yeah, he came in as a co-op. Wow. Yeah, and when he first came in, I thought he was totally useless. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but everybody said, give him a chance. So, uh, yeah, Corey, Corey worked from co-op to president of a company. Amazing. So he came in, I think he was about uh, 20, 21, maybe... I know he was drinking, so at least 21, <laughs> and now he's 35, and he's the yes. guy in charge. Or around, I don't know exactly how old he is. Anyway, this is our war room. I can't go in. Um, yeah. This is our library. Um, so um, uh, we store old books. You can't find a lot of this stuff in. Um, you can't find a lot of this stuff in the, uh, like on the web. Yeah. And, but some of it's pretty cool. A lot of old stuff sometimes turns into new stuff. Yeah. So we have books on how to design snap fits in metal uh, and wood. <laughs> because in the olden days, they, they used to do that. So these things help us out when we're trying to come up with new concepts and designs. Yeah. These things are virtually loaded with, um, these are loaded with tech transfer things that, again, they may not be online, yeah. Uh, and this way we've got we've got a backup plan, and all of everything in here that all goes into our library database, so that we can find it and all this stuff. Right. The one thing we were lucky was um, 
uh, Corey's wife actually used to work here and she put a lot of the stuff, she was getting her master's degree in uh, library science and uh, so she put us on the right track for this and that way we can find everything. So up there are a lot of examples of before and afters. Um, it's amazing. We have so many of those things and you can see there's kids toys, that's an outboard motor. Those are uh, tooling blocks for different, um, different um, uh, machine tools. Um, we won awards. Um, there's some of them up there. Um, tractors that we did for China and uh, Japan. Mm -hmm. Tractors, rice, rice harvesters, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is all the kind of stuff that we sometimes want to keep in house. Um, so sometimes people throw out too much uh, when it comes to paper. Yeah. Um, I figure it's here. We got a spot for it. Let's just keep it. These are all old. Uh, reports and whatnot that we did for different customers. And then this is where um, <coughs> the um, some of the senior engineers, the electronics guys are in here. Um, they're all seated in there. Some of them anyways. Like I said, we've got a whole bunch of um, we've got a whole bunch of people that are actually at a different at the other location. Mm -hmm. So they're working on actually um, this is one of the shirts the, that oh, we got. The, Oh, yeah, Monroe Defense. Yeah, yeah. so Monroe yeah. Defense is a separate group. You have to have secret status and stuff like that. Yeah, you have, so. uh, to, have, you have to have clearance. Yes. Yeah. So you have to have ITAR and secret status in order to work there. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. met uh, Dave and Mike. Is it Mike? Yeah. Mike Dave. and Dave? Yeah. Uh, Dave, actually. Yeah, Dave yeah. Foreman. Yeah. Yes. He's uh, the vice president in charge of that. Yes. So yeah. let's drop in here and... Uh, before we do that, <laughs> the cyber quad. Yes. You have to. You have to go for a ride. Have you ever driven this before? I actually have. Oh really? At a Tesla meetup. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you know how to drive it. Do you want to take it? Yes. Actually, uh, I can. Maybe we I do can... it after lunch. Oh she. Oh yeah. That's yeah. Good because it's lunchtime now. Yes. So. Okay. Well then. Thank you so much for the walk through Sandy, and uh, I'm so glad I'm able to show people the behind the scenes of yeah. Monroe Associates. And yeah. you know, it's so much going on here. Lots of amazing innovation happening yeah. Yeah. from this brilliant, brilliant <laughs> mind no, no, of no. yours. There's, like, there's a hundred brilliant. Oh here. no, no, no! You started it. So yeah. who knew? You know, you could put a, a Corvette engine on top of you know in an, an airplane. airplane yeah amazing who would have thought so thank you so well, much sandy you. for thank allowing you. me to spend time with you it's such an honor and privilege well, i'm thank very you. glad that you had a good time thank you thank you all right we'll see you later okay so this is sandy in his 20s there's glare but wow and then Andy and Sue, probably from the 90s. Right here? Yeah, from the middle there. Oh, that's, is that Sue? Yep. Yeah. Sandy was always rocking the mustache. Yes. <laughs> oh, this is cool. Yep, this is a. Uh, Company bar. Uh, company bar, nice, nice perk. <laughs>